Um, Councilor uh, Dubs. Here. And Councilor Rothenberg. Here. I just wanted to put my battery right up. Oh, did you look underneath. Maybe the oh, okay. thing might not be turned on, but I get another one here. I think she was on. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you. How are you? Pretty good. Have I started looking at So it's over here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, thank you. How's the question? I was in my garden. I was in my We never would have known. <laughs> I know I need to rely on a cow. Okay. First. Yeah. Um, sorry, do you want to continue? The, did you finish the roll call? I did. Okay. <laughs> that was a short each cow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be an even shorter public comment, I think. Oh. So. <laughs> so it doesn't look like there's any public comment. So um, we'll move on to um, approving the minutes of the April 4th, 2024 Joint City Services Community Resource Committee meeting. So, uh, can we do a roll call to do we do a roll call? I think we just need a motion to oh. approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Councillor Dubs and then uh, Councillor Rothenberg um, seconded it. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Dubs. Yes. And Councillor Perry. He's not here yet. So Alex still hasn't joined. He still hasn't, yeah. I mean, Alex Garrick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so next is. Um, Updates and announcements from committee members. So does anybody have any announcements or anything going on? Okay, well, um, Summer on Strong is starting Wednesday, so um, it's really exciting and fun. It looks like we'll have some good weather for it, too. So, And hopefully most of the summer we'll have good weather. So Strong Street is closed off and businesses are open and seats are set up and umbrellas and it's a lot of fun and there's music at various times. So everybody out there should try to stop by. Okay. Okay, next. You're up. So uh, thank you, Rep. Sabadoso, for coming today. It seems like I'm always asking you to speak at various <laughs> events and rallies and um, but you always oblige, and I really appreciate that. So um, welcome today, and we're excited to have you here. And so how how would you like me to proceed? Do you want me to do a little bit of overview of what's going on at the State House, or what's, what's most useful? Yeah, why don't you do an overview, and then we can take it from there and see sure. what stands out for all of us. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so let's see. Where are we in the legislative process? Uh, the House completed its uh, its version of the fiscal 25 budget uh, in in April. Um, and you as you may know, the Senate is taking up that budget this week. So we will know by Thursday or Friday, we'll see how soon they finish up uh, where the two chambers stand on various issues. Uh, as you probably know, that budget will then go to conference committee almost immediately, where I am very sure we will once again be late in getting you a fiscal year budget. Um, but we will get that to the governor's desk um, probably by mid-July. Um, and then from there, if the governor has any vetoes uh, or anything, we will uh, try to take care of any overrides. Um, so that's in terms of finances, the, the biggest thing that's happening, um, many of you may know that the financial picture of the state is not exactly as we had expected it to be. Um, you all work in municipal government, so you know budgeting is a bit of forecasting and, and trying to figure out in that crystal ball where our revenues are going. While our revenues are not down, they're not quite as high as they were. And so we're trying to be very cautious to make sure, or where we expected them to be rather. So we're trying to be very cautious in our budgeting so that we don't try to plan for things that we can then not afford. Um, we had some good news with uh, the fair share amendment, revenues coming in from that a little bit higher than we had anticipated, but we are still trying to be cautious. Um, again, we don't want to overpromise and under deliver. Uh, Otherwise, there will be a lot of legislation passed uh, in both chambers in the coming weeks. As you might know, our fiscal, I'm sorry, our legislative term ends on 
for, for formal sessions on July 31st. Uh, so after that, we can still pass legislation, but it does require unanimous consent. So anything larger, controversial, or an appropriation will have to be taken care of by July 31st. Last week, the House took up legislation around hospitals and uh, market review rate review process, which was really important. I just, since I'm here in Northampton, want to do a major call out because it was my predecessor, Peter Cocott, who in 2017 wrote the first draft of that bill. Um, over 100 pages. It's a mammoth bill. It certainly has been updated since then, given the um, crisis that we've seen with Stewart Hospital in eastern Massachusetts. But he did really form the basis of that. So we were finally successful in passing that bill. It's going over to the Senate. Senate President just said today they will be taking it up. So that will help support our community hospitals and hopefully create some stabilization in um, healthcare costs, which we uh, have seen go through the roof post pandemic. Um, we also have an economic development bill that's coming up. So this, there's still time if you have ideas for things that should be included in that bill. Um, I have a long laundry list of things I'd like to see included, but I'm always happy to include more. Um, that's going to be a bond bill. So those will, are not quite like earmarks. They're authorizations. The governor can decide to appropriate money or she can decide not to. She has discretion there, but we do really think it's important to try to make sure that the governor in that bill gets a good list of what priorities are across the state. Um, we're also going to be doing the housing bond bill. That's another mammoth bill, um, over a billion dollars, and the largest investment we've made in housing in a really long time. So the House is planning to take that up in the coming weeks. We will also be taking up, I'm, I'm very excited to say, a maternal health care bill. We're hoping in early June um, that has a variety of pieces to it. I'm happy to go more in depth, but I don't want to go too far into the weeds in anything unless you really care. Um, we will, for Memorial Day, be likely taking up a veterans bill as well. Um, and that was based off of what the governor filed earlier in the session, the HEROES Act, that was in response to the tragedies we saw during the pandemic, both in Holyoke and in Chelsea, um, but also making sure that we're doing right by our veterans, which we, we don't, unfortunately, always do. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that is definitely percolating. We have a lot of conference committee reports that we will still be working through. Um, as you know, we passed gun legislation earlier in the year. We passed wage transparency legislation, um, and those are all still pending, as well as, uh, and I think just significantly, although a little bit wonky for municipal government, um, a special bill that allows us to use a piece of our reserves to go after additional federal funding. Um, as you know, that federal funding very often is directed towards specific communities. And so we're looking forward to getting that bill out of conference committee as well, because it makes our state more competitive uh, for the many grant programs that are coming through with the current uh, Biden administration. So I think that's a bit of an overview of where we are, but I'm very happy to answer any specific questions. Does anybody have any Questions for Rep. Sabadosa? Okay, uh, Councilor Ruffenberg. Um, I would love to hear you just expound upon that last point about the federal grant opportunities and what you guys are hoping to achieve and what you're le leveraging and how. So a lot of, of course, a lot of the federal grant opportunities require a state match. So um, we like to say a little bit of skin in the game from the states. Uh, the Biden administration has successfully push through some major pieces of infrastructure legislation and the grants that are now starting to be announced from those bills often require the state to step up with funding. So that's what we're trying to do. It would take a piece of the interest that we have on our rainy day fund, which is in excellent condition in the state of Massachusetts. We have more than enough money on our rainy day funds. So we're able to take that interest and leverage it in order to be more competitive for those grants. And I would say, if you're not already, uh, Senator Markey and Senator Warren both send out regular emails uh, talking about um, webinars that they host to discuss grant updates and other information that are really, I think, very useful for municipalities. I am positive the mayor's office is all over that. Um, but it is really interesting if you have spare time and want to find out a little bit about what the federal government is trying to do to help communities. Councilor Dubs. 
Thanks. Um, uh, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to ask a pretty specific question. Sure. Um, this is about a bill that I read about um, not too long ago. It was pretty recently. Um, Massachusetts House uh, passes Massachusetts House passes a bill to remove outdated and offensive terms in Massachusetts laws yes. and changes uh, and Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission's name to Massability. Um, and and in it it says that the language in the bill removes uh, all variations of outdated terms such as handicapped, disabled, and retarded. Yes. Um, I have to. Met, I just guess I have to say that I I um have issue with this bill um, because it lumps the word disabled in with uh, handicapped and retarded. And as a disabled person, I don't understand that. Um, so I was wondering if, I guess I'm wondering a few things like who was consulted for um for this bill? Wow. Like were there how many disabled people were consulted and. Yep. Because I, I personally, you know, I understand there, there are people, people with disabilities, and there, there are two ways that people identify, and, and that's as a disabled person or as a person with a disability. And I know people who, some people identify with one and some, some identify with the other. Yeah. So to make a bill that, like, like almost forces us to divide those people, you know, it forces us to like it erases the voices of people who identify as disabled people. And I guess I find that kind of harmful. And I'm wondering like how that happened. So I didn't see the specific article you're referencing, but I think it might be helpful if I got you the, the language of the bill itself. Okay. Um, I actually really love this bill because it was worked on by staffers who identified as disabled. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been their pet project for years. And they worked really hard to convince legislators that updating the language, uh, particularly the word retarded, in, leg in the mass general laws was significant and important. Yeah. And um, and and I I don't want to um, I don't want to claim that the legislation says things that it doesn't, but I don't. I, I, so let me get you the the text of the legislation. I oh, yeah. will say though, it was absolutely worked on by people who were directly impacted, um, both in the Senate office and the and the House office of the two legislators who promoted it. They, these um, individuals have worked in the state house for a really long time, and they did this in um, in consultation with the Arc of Massachusetts and other advocacy groups. So I I would what I'd appreciate is if I could give you the language of the bill rather than the article, because sometimes the news articles don't. Oh no, it's not a news article. Okay. All right. Basically describing what the bill Great. Well, let me get you the text of the bill. And if there's something in that you don't like, the bill hasn't got, um, the bill has to go to the Senate still. Yes. I, I, well, I, I agree. There's a, obviously the word retarded and handicapped are in the text. Yep. Um, but the word disabled is also in that same category as considered archaic and updated. I don't think that's 100% accurate. And it, it, it I, I believe you. But let me let me that that's my post. That might be inaccurate. Secret post is from Mindy Dog. Okay. I, I saw on the page too. Yeah, I don't think we got rid of the word disabled. It, it says that it does. No, I, I I again I I totally believe you. I just think I I'd like to go back to the legislation, and make sure that I'm not misspeaking. But I feel like that would have been a struggle if if that's what we did. I mean, the multiple posts from you and from Mindy Dog. All right. Well, and and so I'll get you the the text of the bill. We can go through that. And if there, if if you find problems within it, it has not passed the Senate yet, so there is still time to amend it. So the final version that becomes law is actually something that's useful. Still time. Yes, of course. Anybody else have questions? Hi, Councilor Jarrett. Yeah, if you're taking uh, <clears throat> questions from members of the public, hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I, and uh, nice to see you, Lindsay. Um, oh, I had a question about, I think there are two separate bills. One is would attack have the attacks on endowments of large nonprofits yep. and then the other would be a partial collection allows municipalities to partially collect taxes from large nonprofits yep. um, could you give us an update on those 
Um, I I can't really give you an update. I don't think that they've moved forward. At least they're not being actively considered for a floor vote at this time. Um, I think I've supported both of those. At least I, I know I've supported the first. Um, but other than that, I, I, I haven't heard a lot of um, chatter about them moving quickly. I, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I feel like that's a disappointing answer. Oh, no worries. Um... And then my other question is more general. Uh, of, are there specific bills that you know you could use our help on in terms of you know potentially a, a resolution in the future, or just just making sure that we're in communication about when when we can step in and, and really assist yeah. you? Um, I don't think right now there's a, I I don't think there's anything right now where a resolution would be helpful, especially given where we are in the legislative session. I would absolutely say if there are things you want to see included in the housing bill or the economic development bill in particular um, that would focus on Northampton or issues that you're seeing in the community, this would be a wonderful time to get that information. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, as, as you know, we're in a budget season and have a lot out. Um, and um, I'm curious how things are looking in terms of specifically Chapter 78 coming and if there's any movement to um, change it for this year. I'm sure there is for future years, but um, any, anything this year that, that might shift between now and July. Uh, well, the Senate is taking up their budget this week, so there may be something there, although I have I didn't see that shift in the base budget. I will say the only thing that the House, well, there there might be a few things that are helpful, but the, the biggest thing um, was that we increased the per pupil amount. Um, so we boosted that by about $70. I know that does not solve Northampton's budgetary woes by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a little bit more money coming in. Um, and we also tried to make sure we were fully funding the transportation pieces of this. The Senate will decide in which direction to go. As you know, it is a dance between the House and the Senate. So the House will offer one thing and the Senate will generally try to go much bigger and we'll see where we can come up. I'm, I'm hoping with a slightly improved revenue picture, the Senate will take that into consideration, but we will, we will see. Um, and we are certainly having a lot of conversations about what to do in the next legislative session around Chapter 70. Um, there's a lot of debate as to whether Chapter 70 should be reopened, shouldn't be reopened. There are, of course, winners and losers and all of that, but there are a lot of communities that are in a similar situation to Northampton at the moment and are really struggling with their, um, with their school budgets. Thank you. Yeah. How are you guys ready? Mr. Perry, do you? Yeah. Hi. How are you? Well, how are you? Doing well. Sorry, I was a little late. Oh, please. Driving this carpool for my kids. Um, so I don't know if I missed this, but I know that last time you were here, you were talking about some of the health care bills and the Senate had done a pharmaceutical price reduction bill and you said the House may take it up. I was wondering if you guys did or... So, uh, as I just mentioned, the House and the Senate are a dance. So I think that is a priority of the Senate president. I've heard the speaker talk about the pharmaceutical pricing bill. He has given us indications that he would like to take it up. I think it really depends on what those negotiations end up being, whether we'll do that and whether we'll do it in time for a conference bill to come forward. Uh, and you were, you briefly mentioned the maternal health care bill, yes. and I know that you've done a lot of work and are <laughs> excited about it. So if you want to expound, I am willing to listen. Sure. All right. There's some very exciting things in that bill. Uh, so first of all, we have an update to the regulations around freestanding birth centers. Northampton has the only freestanding birth center in the state. So that is very helpful because we are hoping that others will open. Um, the legislation um, includes, and I just drew a blank all of a sudden, mm -hmm. um, uh, it expands mass health coverage uh, for um, postpartum visits. Um, so right now, if you bring your child to the pediatrician in the first six months, the pediatrician does a little wellness check with the birthing parent to make sure things are going okay. We want to extend that out to 12 months because we know postpartum depression can actually creep up later on. It doesn't always occur within those first six months. Um, there is a provision in there around pregnancy loss awareness, which is my provision, so I won't lie, I'm very excited about that. Um, it's a topic we don't talk a lot about in the state, but I'm uh, very excited that this will require you to do more public awareness about it uh, for parents. And let's see, there's a couple other bills in there. There's one around improved, um, improved assistance for lactation. 
Um, so uh, new parents can can get that and not feel quite so alone in the process. Um, and I'm certainly hoping to try to attach a few other things to it. So I would say stay tuned on what the final bill looks like. Um, we've really uh, been trying to push some of the legislation we have around doulas forward. And I think this is a really great bill for that. And we have a great support from House leadership on it. So I'm hoping that it will cross the finish line. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask about the maternal health bill too, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, could you talk more about the housing bond bill? So the housing bond bill, um, I, I think, has generated an enormous amount of buzz. We were just with Secretary Augustus the other day in Chesterfield um, talking about the um, community investment tax credit, tax incentive, rather, um, and the money that goes to the CDCs because of that. And so, of course, the housing bond bill comes up because it would make that program permanent. That's really incredible funding that goes into CDCs without any directive. So imagine a grant that you can use however you want. <laughs> it's kind of everybody's dream, right? Uh, and the CDCs use it in a variety of ways, often to help develop housing. Um, so again, the housing bill will make that permanent. Um, it makes investments in public housing for the first time in a really long time. Um, and of course, tries to focus on that middle income housing and workforce housing that is really lacking right now. The bill came out of uh, the housing committee and the bonding committee completely as the governor filed it, uh, which I think is an indication that the House and the Senate have their own views as to what that should look like. And of course, we want to be respectful of the governor and her work on this. If you've noticed, she is really pitching this hard. She has been across the state regularly talking about this bill, and they've been having listening sessions uh, to figure out what the next steps are. And I will say Secretary Augustus the other day mentioned they really want to now work on a piece around rural housing. Rural housing is, it is hard to build housing everywhere, but it is really hard to build rural housing simply because of lack of infrastructure, right? You have to start with where's the water and where where's the septic go? So that's a whole different level. Um, but I, I would say that you're going to see each branch take this bill up very soon. They're each going to offer their own versions of that. One of the things that uh, has been, um, I don't want to say controversial, but I, I think just maybe a little up for debate has been the transfer tax, whether we, we move in that direction. The version that the governor wrote isn't very beneficial for Western Massachusetts. So we are trying to make sure that we, uh, if we can get that into the bill, that we adjust it so that it's useful to our communities. Um, and then uh, really, like, are there pieces that we could add to support rural housing as well into the bill? Um, but you know, in that we can also offer amendments for authorizations for the governor. So, you know, if there are specific projects, this is really a very good time to ask about them. Sure. Sure. The transfer tax is a small tax that would go on uh, the price, uh, uh, the sales price of any property. So if you're selling or buying something, you would pay this transfer, this fee to, to, to sell. It doesn't work in Western Massachusetts because the way it's written in the bill, it requires the median home sale price to be over a certain threshold. And we don't meet that threshold. If this would only apply to very high income house, uh, very expensive housing, rather over a million dollars, but your area or your county also has to meet an average home price threshold that we just don't meet. So we're trying to figure out how we can adjust that so that it could work for us too. We certainly have plenty of homes that sell for millions of dollars. Those would be prime for a transfer tax. We're definitely taxing the people who can afford it the most. Um, but without the median home sale price being a little bit higher, the fee would, wouldn't apply as currently written. It goes into an affordable housing trust fund. So it would then help to build more affordable housing. I appreciate the questions because I sometimes spend too much time thinking about these things and I forget to explain them clearly. <laughs> No, that would be great because um, there's a huge need for affordable housing, as we all know, and um, it's exciting that a lot's happening around that here in, in War II. Especially. Yes. Um, we have a new project just, that just started last week, so yes. on Laurel Street. It is very exciting. And yeah. Valley CDC property. 
Yeah. Yeah. I had a tour of it. So yeah. it's going to be really nice. It's very exciting. And, and Ward 2 has, um, I think it's still Ward 2. You have some uh, Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. houses going up as well. On Burp's Pit. Yes. Yeah. yeah they're it looks like they're almost done. Yes. Colin and I helped build one of the sheds. Oh, really? So hopefully it all works okay. out for everybody. <laughs> Don't breathe too hard on it or slam the door. <laughs> we, we did our best. What, what's the state of our public housing in Northampton? How are we doing? Anything we need to know that we can help out with? Um, I, not that I am aware of. I haven't had any specific requests from, from the Housing Authority in Northampton. Um, I know that, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of deferred maintenance, uh, and that's not just true of Northampton, but that's true of all housing authorities across the state, uh, which is why that housing bond bill is so important, because it actually makes an investment in them um, so that they can do some of that work. And how about just sort of the state in general and their view, the state house and the governor sort of like how is support aside from that bond bill looking for the future of affordable or public, really specifically public housing right now? I think it's a trickier question because public housing, I mean, it really depends on how it's funded, right? And even the Northampton Housing Authority is a great example of state properties and federally funded properties. Even the state properties, though, have to follow a lot of the federal regulation. The federal government for decades has not really felt the need to invest in more public housing. In fact, I would, I would say the complete opposite. There's been a move toward we shouldn't be building, um, and it's funny, I'm going to say projects because that's what they, they were trying to avoid, building places where you were putting people, lower income people together because they there was just a societal move away from that idea. I think now there is actually more or a slower shift rather towards actually maybe we do need to be building some more public housing. Public housing does not have to look like large apartment complexes. It can come in many different ways. And in fact, we see that in Northampton. I would say with Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights, you have sort of little townhouses. And that is also a type of public housing um, that I would also argue is perhaps more conducive to families. Um, and you're starting to see the government support that. I still think some of the regulations around public housing make it very, very difficult to manage. It makes it very difficult for people to move in. Um, and one of my hugest pet peeves is it's there are also too many evictions from public housing and from affordable housing in general um, because those properties have never had wraparound services, which is, I guess, like the buzzword of the, the 2020s. It certainly wasn't back in, in you know, the 1990s or the 1980s, but we're seeing people, particularly as they age, just need additional services that you can't expect a housing authority director to provide. Um, and we're seeing people with substance issues and mental health issues just across the board. I mean, we all know that there are mental health issues. Um, and when people are completely alone and in an apartment where they're expected to um, survive and, and clean and do things, daily activities of living that they might not be able to do on their own, um, it's really challenging. And they often end up evicted rather than getting assistance because there is no assistance. Um, I'm grateful in Northampton, our Department of Community Care has offered to step up and help in some of these cases, but I mean, those are only the cases we find out about and are able to tell them. Uh, it's, it's extremely challenging, and it is not an issue that any level of government, I would argue, is fully um, take tackling head on. Um, yeah, it sounds really awesome because pe some people think because you live in an apartment building, your neighbors check on you, but, you know, having lived most of my life in an apartment building and coming from New York, it's not true. That's not true. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really important as a lot of us are aging now and, um, certainly need the services. Absolutely. Um, yeah, community department of community care has really stepped up in a lot of ways. So it's good to hear that this is the taking this on as well. I have consistently been impressed by their willingness to tackle things that I don't think any of us thought would be their quote unquote job mm -hmm. description, but they really seem to understand what their mission is in the community. And mm -hmm. it's, it's very beautiful. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about them denying help when 
they could provide it. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions for Lindsay or anybody out there? Stan or Alex or? Okay, well, I guess that's it. Do you have anything else you want to say? And I want to echo what Alec, uh, Councilor Jarrett said too. If we can help in any way or do anything, please don't hesitate. And um, we appreciate everything you're doing out here in Northampton and Western Mass. Well, likewise, mm -hmm. it is not easy to be in municipal government. Mm -hmm. So you all have my deep mm -hmm. respect and admiration for the work that you do. Um, particularly as you, you know, tackle increasingly challenging questions. Um, and you are certainly not paid enough or asked. <laughs> um, I, I don't think any of you thought you were signing up for some of the challenges that you've undertaken, but I, it is appreciated from the community, whether you feel that love every day or not. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. And you're running for office again yeah. this year. So do you want to say anything about that or yeah, no I, I will not I will not I feel like that's perhaps it's a, to... it's perhaps it's a conflict um, uh, out of yeah. the meeting but um and you're unopposed though yes. okay okay well um we're glad to have you here and thank you to have you again for uh the talk and as our rep at any at any time I hope you. that you know my door's always open thank you um okay and they're just moving on there's no items referred to committee. Um, anybody have any new business? Anything? Um, okay, I guess if somebody wants to make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn then. Second. Uh, Councillor Perry and Councillor Rothenberg seconded it. Yeah, we'll do a voice vote. Since everyone's here now. Yeah. yeah. Just, just say all in favor. No. Okay. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I okay. love boys, folks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and next month, uh, Senator Alford's going to be here with us. So another good meeting. Um, see you, Alex. Thanks for coming.